what can we really, what can we really do? Um, and so here we are. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how we approach a business problem in the form of me quite literally designing and building it live on camera. Um, that being said, I do need a business problem. And I didn't want to come into the webinar with one that I've already got because one, it wouldn't be risky enough. And it also wouldn't prove the main point of why we're here today, which is ultimately to showcase how easy it is and how powerful it is to automate using Microsoft 365. So before I run some introductions, if you have come or can think of a low key, uh, remembering that I've only got an hour business problem, please get it into the chat right now and our glorious team will scan and scout and pick a lucky winner, um, which we can then dig into slightly more. We are strapped for time and I'm semi hoping that we have a confident crowd today, but if we do draw a blank and nobody can think of a scenario, then I'll simply pick something we've done before and we'll run with that. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a, a seriously boring hour. So whilst you type away intros, my name is Tom Moore. For anyone that doesn't know me, I'm one of the co-founders of Power365 Solutions, which is an organization that has been set up deliberately to take advantage of Microsoft Power Platform and in all honesty, business process, business process automation in general. We've got a fantastic hand-picked team that's ever growing and our primary focus is really turning our clients' business problems into automated solutions and essentially capitalizing the license costs that they'll be paying for Microsoft 365. My background is technically modern workplace, um, but with my passion and the business direction being Power Platform, my area of focus within Power 365 covers the full Power Platform suite and my enjoyment focuses on Canvas app, speci Canvas app specifically, which is what we're gonna be doing today. So I'll hand over quickly to Alex um, and then over to Molly quickly for some intros and then we'll come back to the scenarios that we hopefully end up with in the chat. So Alex. Yeah, good afternoon all. Uh, I'm the lead Power Platform Consultant at Power 365. So yeah, similar to Tom, uh, similar backgrounds actually. So both ex-military and now focusing on the complete Power Platform. So yeah, pretty much cover it all. Uh, Molly. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Molly. I'm the marketing manager here at uh, Power 365 Solutions. Um, you probably would have had me contact you about this event, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, my job is uh, not technical, it's to monitor the chat, so I will pass on any information to the team whilst they're doing their live builds. Cool, we, we've, um, we've had an absolute flood of uh, of ideas here, much more than I thought we would end up end up taking, to be honest. Now that what I will probably do from this is pick two and then perhaps let the we've got loads of thumbs going on. It's almost like a voting system. I'm probably going to pick two. Uh, please take no offense if I if I don't pick one. <laughs> Sean has just I've met Sean before. Thank you, Sean. Um, I think we'll go with. Uh, would it be unfair of me to Alex and Molly to pick one that I semi feel comfortable with? I feel like it would, maybe that's what I'm leaning towards. Let's go with, um, let's go with Stu at Smith and let's also take, quite like the idea of somebody's put, I think some of it's something to do with expenses in here. The check in, check out could be good fun. Sign up sheet, like that. Maybe the sign up. Let's do the let's do the let's do Stu's one. What we got here? Uh, business problem with no oversight and any requests users raise. Let's do a simple sign up sheet and let's do the um, record and approve company expenses. Which ones do we fancy? So that is just for your reference, Alex and Molly. That's one from Ben Pickering. It's one from Stuart Smith, and it's one from Wayne Wallace. It's a random choice there. Whilst you do that, so it's bring up some notes. Yeah, it's the one from Stuart, I presume something down the line of of IT ticketing. IT is where I would be going with that or some form of HR uh, okay. ticket log. The expense could be a good one. And then we've got a simple sign up sheet using the SharePoint list. I think simple sign up sheet is pretty simple for you, Tom, knowing you. <laughs> so I'm going to back you up on that one. I don't, I don't know if that's a compliment or a I think expenses is something that we've done before. So again, that's probably probably cheating actually. So you've cheated yourself there, Tom. Uh, but IT ticketing from the background, I've, I've worked on IT service desk and it was abysmal. So I think I'd personally like to see that actually, if it is IT. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll second Alex in there. There's a, there's a small cheat on there uh, that I've definitely done an IT ticketing before. So if we are going to presume that as an IT ticketing, then I'm going to I'm going to jump on it. So the, the scene that we're going to set for the rest of the, the call here, apologies if that's not your business scenario, please. Absolutely. Um, we're, we're looking to make this a concept so that we can do more of these in the future. So don't be disheartened by if it, if it isn't your, your scenario. The way that I want to run this, however, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you now as an audience the ability to quite literally see the entire process. Now, there's a disclaimer on that, that the process we're running here is going to be done within an hour. Um, typically, an app does take a lot longer than an hour. I'm not trying to do any discredit to anybody within the, the, the industry. Um, where we always start, though, is we always start with database design. Now, I'm also going to put a disclaimer on this is that I'm going to go fairly fast. So um, I'm going to offer the ability for Molly or Alex to ask questions. Should there any be? Should there, should there be any? And also, if you have got questions about things I'm doing, place them in the chat and we'll go from there. Um, I've got We've the chat got open, but... straight away, Tom. So I'll, uh, oh, so I'll step in there. So Dan's okay, asked fine. what's what's an IT ticket? What is an IT ticket? Well, it's a fantastic question, Dan. And what we'll do now is we'll break it open from a design perspective. So the first thing that we will always do when we jump into building apps is we need to know what the back end is going to look like. So we need to know what the database is going to be. So, for example, if we if we just take the actual scenario that we've got here, nicely written, and I drop it in. So for anyone that can or can't see this, I'll make it a bit bigger. Is that OK, Alex or Molly? Does it look? How does it look? Too small, too big. That's a bit small. Better? Yeah, I can read that. So our scenario is here. Small bits and currently have no website users raised, but support or questions or anything. Be that support or questions or anything. And the way that people would log something, we can see the output. OK, of course, cool. so there's a little bit of reporting. It. So what we're going to do is we need to work out what we are going to build. So the back end of this database for the purpose of what I'm doing is going to be on SharePoint. Um, the reason I'm going to use SharePoint for this is, is simply based on the idea that uh, my job being modern workplace as a background is to try and keep the licensing costs for my users quite cheap, whereas Alex as a, as a background has a Dataverse. Um, it is more leaning towards Dataverse and with that he he takes the, the idea that licensing is a good thing, whereas to me licensing is the devil. So for the purpose of this I'm going to operate on SharePoint. Now, with anything like this, we need to plan those databases out. I'm going to create some form of relationship between them. The first thing that I'm going to presume in something like this, and, and apologies, Stuart, that I can't um, put into you for questions here. I'm just going to presume everything, but feel free for the rest of the audience. If you've got an idea that you think would be beneficial for something like this, as I'm designing, throw it in and we'll try and include it. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to presume that we need to do with this is we're going to need to collect details about said ticket. So something like we're going to need a title, we're going to need a description, going to need the user that submitted it to so potentially the person. Um, we're also maybe if we're going down an IT ticketing road, we're going to need the status. So that might be things like um, open, closed. Let's also have a submitted. So we'll do a submitted, open, and closed because that's always handy. We'll have the person. We'll come back to whatever else we need in there and we'll build these up as we go. The next thing that we're going to probably need, I imagine, just just off the top of my head, if I was going to be dealing with an IT ticket system, is we're probably going to have all of these tickets come through onto a dashboard. And from there, as an IT, I've, I've done IT support in the past through my days in the military, we probably want to be able to log what notes we're going to get in there too. So I'm probably going to also need somewhere where I can add notes, which means that the ticket's going to need a reference, which means we're also going to need a reference in the ticket. Uh, let's make this the, this can be the master. We've then got another database here for notes. Um, have we got any anything else anybody wants to see in here so far? Copy Dataverse for Teams. I could use Dataverse for Teams. Benji, you're absolutely right. What is Dataverse? Dataverse, just for your Giovanni, just for you on there is the is the Microsoft version of um, it's like an improved SQL. It's kind of the, the Microsoft's database structure that everything is built on within the, the Power Platform. So for now, we'll just start with this. Um, and we'll work it up as we go unless anybody throws in some suggestions. So keeping it nice and simple. I have already cheated or I have cheated slightly in that there is a I have created a SharePoint site. This would be something that you'd need to do if you didn't already have some form of database area. I have created one previously, so we don't need for it to wait. 
And normally in these scenarios, what I probably do is I probably PowerShell those lists in. I'm not going to. It's going to take me longer to write a list for, for five, six columns than it is just create it. So the first list I'm going to create them. So blank list. And again, apologies if I'm going fast. We're going to do, I'm going to call it um, fun name, Alex, for an IT system. I don't know. Let's call it Abby Mackins. Call it the iHub if you want. iHub, why not? Like it. Let's just do an iHub and then we'll do a master. Why not? And I'm going to do another list. Call it I. Oops. Fab. Right. So within the master, we've already got title column. Happy to leave that there. Um, the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a description field. So I'll put master underscore description. Now, the reason that I'm denoting the list and placing them in capitals is just because it makes it easier within a Canvas app to be able to find them and I'm calling them. Um, we've got, do you know what I also feel like we should maybe have in here as a priority, I like the idea of a priority. Let's do a priority. Let's make it a choice, make it nice and easy. And we'll have low. Oh, wait. I. Um, we've then got status, which is also going to be a choice. It's going to be fun. And we'll have open. No, Rob, we won't. We'll have submitted. Closed. I am going to put a user column in just to make it a bit easier so I'm not targeting created. So I'm going to put um, person, I think. Yeah, we'll go with it. I may or may not use that. Um, and then we need a reference as well. Go away. Uh, we'll do a reference. Now, I'm just out of pure uh, OCD, I'm going to not utilize that title. And I'm going to turn it off from being required so that I don't need to use it. Now I could put the reference in there. I may put the reference in there. We'll deal with that as we come. We're on the fly. So there's only one way to find out what's useful. What I'm going to do with here now within SharePoint, I absolutely could utilize lookup columns so I could make a relationship between the SharePoint lists. I don't necessarily want my IT guys if I was to de deploy this. I don't think I'd want them within the SharePoint area managing these tickets. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to create a relationship here, but I'll create a relationship in the app when we get into it. So I've got my master sorted. I'm now going to do my notes. I'm pretty happy. Do you know what I also want in here? I want a time spent. Um, I'm going to use the title here as the reference because I'm happy with that one. We might as well keep it, keep it that way. And then I'm going to do notes underscore. Might as well have it. Save, and I'm going to do a number. I'm going to do notes underscore, and I'll leave it as that. So uh, I'm semi relying on you both. Molly and or Alex, let me know whether anyone suggests anything as I'm building. We've got some databases now. Over to the over to the Power App itself. Let's create it from blank. I'm going to do it on a phone. Yeah, I'll do it on a phone. And let's call it. Um, oh, I'll call it iPad. Power. I'll create. Now, for anyone that has or hasn't built apps in Canvas before, one of the biggest things that I've always found when dealing with uh, deploying apps to clients, in all honesty, is we deploy it into a client environment and all of a sudden the client's branding changes or something happens, which means you need to then monitor or be able to update that branding fairly easily. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to try and employ all of the best practices as I go through this. Now, the way that I like to do branding is using the on start code. I'm going to grab some RGBA color picker. Um, and for the purpose of this, maybe I'll go with blue. Let's just choose a blue. We can brand it this way. And I've got an RGBA code here. I'll copy that. So the first thing I'm going to do, we'll leave the databases over there. 
is I'm going to set some colors, some branding colors. So I'm going to do that using a variable. So I'm going to have, I don't know, color primary. I'll make it that RGBA, just put it as a one. There's my color primary in my, my RGBA there. Um, and then maybe I'll do a color secondary. And maybe we'll have blue and then like a like a gray. Like I said, the reason for this means the reason I've done that is because if we then brand this and I start to make the icons and the text and the font um, and the labels or whatever, and I start to make them a specific color and the company then comes back and says, um, we need this to be purple now. Well, all I need to do is I need to edit this RGBA here, run the on start, and every time then it loads, it will rebrand it for me. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I always like to collect the person that is logged in. Now, I could absolutely use the built-in Power Apps function, but the Office 365 is always a nice one to have. So I'm going to add that in, and I'm going to set another variable at start of our current user. I'm going to do Office 365 users. Sorry, bar V2, and I'm going to collect that one. Now, have we got anything else in the chat that anyone wants to see here? Um, the other thing that I'm going to do, just as a general, because I operate within the SharePoint aspect a lot, SharePoint Arena a lot, um, whenever you submit into a person column, you, you have to follow like an OData query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a var submit user, and that var submit user, just so that you, you know, there's no point in the um, in, in the line throughout this webinar, we absolutely use Google and there's nothing wrong with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Power Apps OData, probably searched it before, um, person, uh, SharePoint, Let's see what comes back. And uh, that looks like what I'm looking for. It's close enough. I could take it. But I'm not going to take that one. Is all oh, this one's purple? So I've used this one before. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for here. So whenever you're updating a person column, because it's a, uh, a let's call it a clever column within SharePoint, you need to have um, some extra code in there so you map it towards it. So this O data is just necessary, and there's no way that I can remember that. So I'm happy. I'm happy to admit defeat and utilize. Uh, I'm going to do a lower. I'm just going to use the built-in email just take that you can see that it's asking for mails here got another mail in here that some seems okay just run that and see if it works look at those variables var submit user is it giving me what i need it's good to me it's found me fabulous so the other thing that I like to do is I'm a bit of a nightmare for making things look nice. And I know for a fact that within the, I know for a fact that within here, there are some nice controls that I can take because I don't particularly like the, I know Fluent UI is on its way, but I don't particularly like the, the built-in text boxes. And I could absolutely save some time by not doing this but I think it's worthwhile in the in the long run. The other thing I like to do is I like to create a repository of um, items so that I put myself some icons on there and I like to have an add to the screen. Now the reason that I do that is, is and, and I'll explain this as we go, with a label, we have a label and again the brand, what I'm thinking about here I've been bit many times by needing to rebrand things. So this label I might set up with Sego UI um, I might make it a semi bold because it's semi useful and I'll call this label title. Now what I will do with label title is I'll now copy. I'll now paste and on the items one I've got here. I'll um, in fact label type one is OK for that. What I will do with the the properties of this is I will then refer to label title and I'll show you why that that works in a second. So for color, better dot color. And copy bottom. Um, height and width, not too worried about. Vertical line, not too worried about. Padding, left and right. I could do underline. We could no, it's got false. I'm going to leave as is. Font weight. I'm going to make that one. So label title, font weight, size. I'm going to do label title, size. Font. I'm going to do label title, font. 
Tom, we've had a question asking, do you use GitHub to store source code? Um, not as much as I'm proud to admit, in all honesty. Um, is, it, is it a very quick answer to that? I should absolutely use it more now that we've got a better integration with it. Uh, so potentially bad practice on my part on, on that sense. Yeah, and, that, and that'll depend on the type of deployment as well. So we can't, Tom was building a canvas app here. It depends if we're doing a, a model driven and we're building a pipeline, a CSD pipeline, then we would probably utilize GitHub. But in this scenario, obviously it's a power hour. Tom is not going to be using GitHub, but we will try and make the source code available after the session as well. Um, so I'm just going through here and I'm just following through all of the properties that I may or may not have missed. Now, the reason that I've done this and the reason that I've related this item here to the admin item is because if the company comes through and says they don't like any of the, the title fonts, what I've got the ability to do is change that to Lasso Black and it's going to change around my app. So we'll set that back to Sega UI. I am going to do exactly the same thing. Except I'm going to make one a little bit smaller. It's a bit too small. Let's do it. Do I need to zoom this in? Alex, can you see this okay? Yeah, I can see that. Cool. Um, good to get feedback from everyone else. If everyone else is struggling to see it, just drop us a note. Um, and then I'm going to refer all of these. So this is the last one I'll do. So in here, then uh, conscious that I need to be fairly quick on this because we've not really got very far. Let's just do. Let's keep it as labels next. Font. We are nearly onto the good bits. Is. Uh, just do color now. Ball text off. <laughs> they do for now. And then I'm going to set these colors to color prime. In fact, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do title as color primary. I'm going to do text as color secondary. And if I'm, so these are referring to those variables that I put in the back. Now we should have this open on the other side. So in here, we've got nice buttons that we've got nicer um, text boxes. We've got nice, in fact, it's a perfect one to fit onto. So in here, I'm going to steal that. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to take it. I'm also going to take the date, why not, just in case, and I'm going to take a drop down. So I'm going to copy all of those and I'm going to paste them over into my items, which now gives me a text drop down. That looks a text box, it gives me a date picker, it gives me a description box for multi text, and it gives me a drop down, which means I can start getting rid of those horrible blue by default um, items that I don't want to use. And in here, we'll just put So I've got some things. These need tidying up. There's obviously an element of tidying up on things like the access accessibility labels. Um, didn't think it's going to be a planner task due date in there. I'm not going to be doing a plan. plan. I don't particularly need a planner description. Right. So we're ready to go. Home. What do I need to do now? Where do I want to go with this? Now the other thing that I like to do, and I'll be honest with you, this is a small amount of cheat, but I do have a repository of app icons that I like to use. And I'll show you why I use them in a second. So I'm just going to add all of these in. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. And I just like to load them in. The other thing that I like to load in is a logo, because why not? Free marketing. Let's just put our, that's not what I want. Let's put this one in. And I've got a logo. It's probably too small. I should have put the other one in. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take a button. Quite like these buttons. So I'm just going to take a button. And then we'll get cracking into what I actually want. It's purple. It's not ideal. Go with it. Okay. Don't need any of that. The display mode, just make the display mode. Edit. And here we are. Cool. So I've got, a button. I've got some items. Now, what I think we need to do first, I don't know if anybody does or does not agree. The other thing I'm going to load in is to make it look nice. Maybe I shouldn't be focusing on making things look nice. It's not what I want. In here. Tom, we've had a question. Where did you get the app icons from? Uh, that's a very good question. Fluent UI icons, I think, from GitHub. Could have been could have been flat icons. In fact, it might have been flat icons for those ones. I know for the Dynamics apps that we use, I use Fluent Icons, which is a GitHub repository. Happy to place these links in wherever we need. But I think for those ones I've just included, they were from flat icons. Um, I've just uploaded something else that we'll we'll get into in a second. And what I might also do is add in 
something that I've also created on Photoshop in the past, which is some backgrounds. We'll see whether we use those. Right, what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to get into it. So over to home and I'm going to place in, just for small amounts of awareness, I'd like to add images into variables. I don't think background tablets are on those items that I've uploaded. One way to find out if I, I might not use those variables. It is it is live. Uh, these things happen. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take a button. I think the first thing we need is we need a filter. So I'm going to do an open. I'm going to do a submitted. I'm going to do a closed. A bit bigger and we'll come back to them. I'm going to connect into my databases. So I'm going to use SharePoint. I'm going to connect over here. Power Hour, connect into both. Here I am. What I'm probably also going to do is I'm going to semi-cheat and I'm just going to add something in. Priority of low, I'll put some thingies on that. We'll put it into submitted. This can be the, the reference can be for now, it could just be 20, 22, be on 12, see more. I'll do for now. And I need a Gmail access. I'll exit that. Now, the reason I'm adding something in there is so that when I come back to actually looking at that data, what I've got the ability to do is see something. So I'm going to add a gallery, blank vertical will do for now. And just for semi good practice, go back to my app on start. I'm not going to target directly from SharePoint. We're going to pretend that this is a small company. So I'm going to do call master. And I'm going to say, bring me the iHub master. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a call master and bring all of them in. And then I'm going to do a clear collect and put call my master. And I'm going to filter the I have master where, what did I call it? Star underscore person. I think. Email equals var current user. And this is me now being able to reuse that Office 365 piece. And I'm going to filter that. So in fact, I could probably just filter straight off. Might as well keep it simple. So I'm going to create a collection of all of them, and then I'm going to create a collection of just my tickets. Now, I think then potentially to start, we should have um, my tickets. Just read me these to button open. Yeah. Tids. Closed. Cool. And then I'm going to make this call my master. In here, then, I know I'm not 100% sure whether I've uploaded the right. Um, it's not right. I do kind of want it. It does look nice. I'm just going to drag this over here so you don't need to see where I'm clicking. Maybe he needs to see that. Uh, let's do all of those. The gallery item, that's what I want. Found it. Right, gallery item. Now, the reason I drag this in is because power ups look they're, they're OK, um, but they don't look overly appealing most of the time. So what I've done here is just in the past for a different app that I've created within a gallery is I've photoshopped myself just a white border, a white square. Just makes it look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go with that. What I'm also then going to do within here, I think, is I'm going to add a rectangle. So this is now where we get into some of the fun bits. So I'm going to add a rectangle in here. Um, I could have used over here, but I'm just going to add a rectangle. I'm going to place that in. I'm going to make it a little bit thin at the moment. We'll come back to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to false that out and I'm going to go to fill. And I'm going to do a switch statement and I'm going to do it on this item dot master priority um, dot value. And I'm going to say that if that value is low and I want it to be you know, green, if it's 
I put medium orange. Red. See if that works. That might be because what did I put them as? Let's come back to that in a second. Um, no, I don't want to come back to it in a second. I don't want to do it now. No surprise. Low green, medium, high red. That's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but we'll say let's just change orange, red, green. That's the priority value I do not like. Uh, I, th I think it's because I haven't run my on start. There's nothing wrong with it. It was working, I just hadn't put the collection in. So we've now got green, and then that will switch priority based on what we've got. So I've now got a color coded option. I'll make that a little bit nicer. Let's just zoom that in because I've got a bit of OCD. And whilst we should be going quick here, it will bug me if I don't. So let's bring that up to 10. Hopefully that fits. It's nice Tom, we've had another top. question. Yeah. Uh, is there a limit on the size of database you would use in the collection for OnStart? Yeah, well, you know, obviously there is the, um, we've got the the limits within Power Apps. There is a delegation limit of 2000. Um, for something like this, I've semi perhaps uh, unfortunately presumed that we're probably going to be dealing with a smaller client for something like this. Larger client would probably use something like ServiceNow. So for an IT ticketing, I've presumed a smaller client. If the collection was going to go over, if it was daily, we, I've got one at the moment, they're submitting emails. There's, there's, there's almost 10 emails every, every five minutes throughout 24 hours a day. Something like that needs to go into Dataverse. You need to use a proper database for that. SharePoint is not a proper database, but it is absolutely a good way to have a lightweight app built for your business um, that doesn't put too much pressure on your licensing and is also capable of holding it. It's pretty good as long as we can filter it correctly. So there definitely is a limit. Um, let's just do priority switch. Let's just do that for now. We'll do or whatever. Send that to the back. Now, what I'm going to, no, that's not what I wanted to send to the back, to front. What I'm going to do here then is I'm then going to add the title. So I'm going to go to my items. I'm going to take the title, add that in. How are we doing? 20 minutes, loads of time. Put that in here. This can be that. This item dot. Title. And we'll also place in from the items, we'll take this. And we'll put in the, the reference. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. So I'm going to minus. The reason I'm doing a minus rather than changing the whole thing is because if it does change in the back, I still want it to be semi responsive. Um, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to do one down here. And I'm going to do a Created so we can see what it's created. Now that'll do for now. I'll play with that afterwards. Um, what I then need to do is I need to make sure that the filters that we've got here have some form of effect on what we're doing. So I'm going to do a quick context on that button, and I'm going to do con filter to be self.text. Semi-responsive. Let's place that. In fact, and what I do need to do now is I need to do if um, con filter equals self then update context. Okay. Well, we'll add that in. That's thank you, I found that using it, or if it's already being used, copy and paste that over. Then I'm going to go into the fill, I leave that color where it is. I'm going to do the same and say if com fields are equals self dot text, then let's go. I mean, colors are probably going to be horrible on this. So apologies. I obviously have a repository um, of items and buttons that I would normally use, but I didn't want to look like I was cheating today. So scratch. Now, if I play those, we've got something going on. Fabulous. And then I need to do a filter on this to say where what was it master. You cause call filter. So I should. Uh, 
what was the status value that is it submitted open and closed now the reason for that is because these are capitals Next thing, I'll tidy that up afterwards. So our user aspect of this is nearly done. And I'll also give them, we're going to go into a page so they can see the notes. We'll come to that shortly. What I do need to do though, is I do need to drag in some form of way of creating a ticket. Do I have an add option in here? Yeah, that looks nice. Let's just put that there. Make that bit smaller. There is now an industry standard set of icons. It's certainly going to look horrible and potentially is why um, the aspect of needing time behind these apps probably comes more into the visuals than it does the um, than it does the functionality sometimes. What I do want to do though is when we hover over an image, we don't get any icon change. So what I like to do is I like to do an image add or an image something, and then I like to add an icon. Now I'd normally brand icons, but what I do with that icon is I place it nice and over the top and then just get all of these features. What I do with those is I then group them. And I'll do add click. Which means that now when I hover over, I get an icon change. They don't realize that there's an icon there um, and I can then do icon. That. And on here, then I can add my code. So from this, then what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to do for now. I probably need a new screen, don't I? Let's do a new screen. Let's do a new ticket. And I'll keep this nice and simple for my ads. I'll just do for now, I'll just do a navigate. Um, right there. New ticket. Screen transition to aid. Why not? Which will then take me over here. Cool. Now I'm on the new ticket. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to drop my icons in. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Goes into new ticket. Got one. We've got two. We've got three. I need a label for each of them, so we'll take that one. I'm going to copy that and make it a bit smaller. I make this a bit bigger. I think I'll set those to forty for a height, then a nicer, and I'm also going to set this 13. Hopefully everyone can still see what's going on here. I'm going to make this a bit bigger, and I'm going to put some padding on the bottom, so it raises it a bit, doesn't look like it's directly above. And then I'm going to do that, I'm going to put that back to 40. So what we've got here is we've got title. That becomes our title. We're then collecting the priority, I believe. So a user is always going to say it's a high priority, which means I need to change the items of this to be. That's not what I'm looking for. Change the items of this. Do. Where do I want to put those? Um, I need to let's bring that back. Put those in there. Get rid of the value. Perfect. And I'm going to bring in. In a chat description. That's my collecting priority status. Person I don't need, reference I don't need, description title that'll do, priority, cool. It's pretty much all they need to see because the rest I'm going to do in the back. Now, most people would add in a form to submit data to SharePoint. I'm not a big fan of forms. I find them a bit buggy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a patch statement instead. Um, so I don't need any of that. And I also need to change the fill to become normal. So it's in items, I didn't need to do that. And I'm going to do a submit. And on that submit, I'm going to do a patch into Unjob Master defaults because we're just submitting a new one. Um, and then I'm going to target my columns. So let's just make some, let's make these look a bit nicer. So this is going to become text title, it's going to become text description. Come drop down priority. 
move back to those in a second and then I need to do so what I need to do here is um, first of all create a reference so just so we can see what I'm going to create why don't we do a let's do a text of now and let's make it look like year 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 month month day day hour hour those in caps to see what happens that becomes the current time and then I'm going to wrap that with some of those then I'm going to wrap it with the bar current user why don't I do a first sort of bar current user dot left over the bar current user in Like my T and just I'm just semi showing off here. It's probably not necessary, but let's do a life. Oh. That's one. Make that slightly unique, and then I'm going to do a. We needed like a ticket type, really, didn't I? So we've got type. Like a category almost, shouldn't I put in? This is a good example of how things change. So let's just put up my stick. Do. Save. It's obviously fully expandable. Just refresh my collection. That brings that in. These. Top This is going to become down back in here. I'm going to do whatever. Doing 15 minutes easy. D category dot select dot you So what that allows me to do is it allows me to categorize the tickets that are being submitted, but also create some form of unique reference, semi based on the that where the now is. So I'm taking the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minute, and then I'm taking the initials, and then I'm taking whatever that category is, because the chances are that person's not going to submit something in the same hour or minute for the same category. So we'll go with that. So that's unique enough for me at the moment. There's obviously you can extend and change that however is needed. So what I am going to do is I'm going to submit into reference. And I'm going to say, what is this label reference? We'll call that. So I'll take label reference dot text and then I'm going to submit into master underscore title. And that's going to tool.text and then I'm going to say B. it's going to become take LT Value. And then if anyone remembers, I had mass person. Now, the reason that I did that submit user at the start is because I can now refer to it at the end of my submit SharePoint patch. Isn't it like missing department now oh, and type of text? Fabulous. It's not very handy, is it? I've definitely got it written somewhere, so. Um, let's just okay. oh. set him so good. So it nice to be full. Whenever I took this code from, it's not been very helpful.
tried to cut some corners and it's now not liking it. That's the category. Uh, category, let's get that away. We're good to go. So the reason I had to take those values off is because it was already matching the value based on the fact that it's coming from the same data source. Thank you to whoever wrote that article uh, on here. This isn't very helpful at all. Uh, somebody solved it down there, evidently. Not me looking hard enough. Um, right, now we've got to submit. So what that will allow me to do now is choose a category, put a title in, put a description in here. To submit. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to pre-edge pre the fact that I'm going to need enough context. So I'm going to set up all. Do a notify. And I'm going to navigate them. Um, what I also need to do is I need to re clear collect. So I need to do here. Refresh on my master. Close and then redo that. And then I can do my submit, submit. Yeah, my submission, it's not loaded me anything in. Is that because I didn't put a status in it? It'd be fine. I didn't put a status in of submitted. So let's just change that to put submitted. And then let's go back in to edit mode. Now I'm going to semi cheat on status in the, the paste one. Other than patch it direct, I'm just going to change this to be. In. There it is. So if I now do a different one, software, that can be high priority and I can submit and I get my different things. Perfect. So I've got my submissions. What I would do off the back of that, and if I've got time towards the end, I'm going to build a workflow that will send to IT nice and fast so they can approve or decline it so it goes to open. We'll do that at the end. What I want to do next is I want to be able to add notes. So keeping it within Canvas apps, I'm going to add another screen. This one's going to be a bit of a, a bit easier because I've already got a template. I fact, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to make that invisible. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to duplicate this. You stick it, return all of these to read only. They can't change them. Make description a bit smaller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just realize what I'm also going to need is an admin list. And the reason for that is because we don't want everyone to be adding notes. So I'm going to do a person. And I'll do um, and that's me. Now I've done that because I need to be able to um, set our admin well, if there's a database. We do it in time. Nine minutes, I reckon we're, we're looking OK. I type faster. So if. Um, do a look up into. My bad. Uh, admin. Dot email equals our current user dot mail. Uh, do I want to do it that way? Uh, 
if that equals true, then I'm going to set. Well, I will try this to true. So we'll set. See if that worked. I'm on start. I'm on start. View variable global. Didn't. Did that yes. There's definitely a better way of doing this, but because I've only got nine minutes, uh, semi uh, hacking this out now to save myself thinking too hard. So I've now got true on that, which means I am an admin. Now on this screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add down here, add note, and this is only going to be visible. And it's true, which means when I add a note, I'm going to take the ability to take a piece here, put that in, and I'm also going to take that in, and we're going to have a note with time spent. I'll make this look a bit prettier. Let's take a label that can be notes. The, these can all go in a container. I should really go through and name all of these notes. Uh, we'll make this look a bit nicer. In fact, what I am going to do is I'm going to make it so that it's pop up. Pop up here. I'm going to take another one and turn it white. Comes my pop up. Put this on top. I'll do for now. And this is all going to become. That's going to become based on a visible of. No, this is going to do an action on select context. Add note goes in, then I need a button. To save that note and that save is going to do patch into just realize what I also want to do is on my home page. Need an icon in here. Right arrow, right arrow, right arrow. Do. That's going to open those. Action on select. That's going to go um, set. Variables. Now we're going to navigate over to the notes. If I change the name. Now I'm going to say patch into I have notes and I'm going to patch in default. That's then going to be a um, title. It's going to become fast selected. Note, note is going to be to get through this fairly fast. That's going to become notes I'm spent. You go text I'm spent. Text close that. This is going to be text notes. Close that off. Update context. Note to False. I'm also going to take code that I've already used over here, which is my reset, but I didn't actually apply. Let's apply that now. Go over to my view. I'm going to take that. I'm going to paste that in.
all, which means I can now do notes, ten, save, see you later. That should now come into notes with a reference, perfect, which means I can now, on my notes, that needs to be next into here. Containers are definitely one of the best things that Microsoft have added in a long time. This to be these on the backgrounds. I can then close the note and I can finally then insert a gallery. Oh, not what I wanted to do. Insert a gallery. Let's just take, uh, I'm going to do it from fresh. Insert a gallery, blank gallery. This can become a filter on, I'd probably do it on a collection, but we're running out of time. So filter on an I have notes where title equals bar selected. And that would then be able to have and deliberately not tidying this up <laughs> my time spent, which I could now, if I really wanted to do a collection, here's my collection. It doesn't look very pretty, but I am running out of time. And then that would allow me to now do an aggregate. Let's just take one of these labels. Where I can do a. It's all time spent. And I could then do an aggregate or a count all or a sum of count all, um, all of these based on that. But I'm going to do those. I'm going to place um, place a back arrow so that we have something at least. We're getting I'm conscious that we've got one minute. And I'm going to just do a back arrow. That doesn't need to be there. I'm going to do a back arrow to take me back to home so we've got a fully working app. Okay, that one doesn't look overly nice. Let's take that as well, actually. New ticket. Let's just take that, make it a bit smaller. Uh, I can go, don't need that. Which means I can now, I suppose it's uh, it's not an overly visually impressive app, but what it does allow me to do is it allows me to come in, can click into a ticket. What I could also do with this add note is if my computer didn't die. Don't fancy it. And it's because something is in the way smaller. In my add note. Um, I would now be able to also change the status. That's because of an ordering piece. Let's bring that forward, bring those two forward. Is I can now also change the status if I wanted to put the status in here. So they would be able to now come in and change that status, save that through, um, and then navigate back and filter by open, closed, et cetera, et cetera. So what I do want to semi reiterate there is we've, we, I'm pretty impressed with where we've got actually, Alex, have we got any comments on where we are? Or what we could do different. No, I'm happy we we've, we've got to this point. We've we've hit the hour. Is there any final questions in there? I'm going to semi tidy it up for the next two minutes. But is there any questions that we've got that we want me to answer before this kind of ends? The entire the entire premise of what we have, are trying to achieve with this is there's an IT ticket and request that's been thrown in there. There's not been much discovery. You know, quite literally a couple of minutes worth of discovery. Um, that kind of problem most people are managing through phone calls. I've definitely seen that before. Or sending emails. What this allows us to do is it allows us to give our users something they can put on their phones or within Teams or anywhere that needs to be placed. And they've now, it doesn't look overly visually impressive, but that would only take, um, you know, another 15 minutes to make that look nice. And from that, they've now got their own personal dashboard where they can manage their ticket, see the comments that IT have placed back. And essentially, we've got the ability, because we've now got a database in the background, We've got the ability to run reports on how many hardware faults, how much time has been spent, et cetera, et cetera. So not bad for 45 minutes. I'm pretty impressed with where we got. If we've got no final questions, thank you all for joining. Um, aware it's been extremely fast. This video will go out on, on a YouTube at some point. Um, but again, thank you for coming into our first one. There will be a feedback form, so we'd love to have anything back. Over to you, Molly. That's um, kind of it for me. Um, thank you guys very much.
Um, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your lovely messages now. Um, round of applause for Tom. <laughs> he can relax now. Um, I definitely could not have done anything like that. So, um, so it's absolutely brilliant. We will be running some more of these. So if you have any more ideas or want to see anything, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Um, you should all have my email. If not, just message uh, Path365 on LinkedIn um, or any of us on here. And we will be happy to, um, to answer any of your questions. Um, Andy's just put in a comment. Uh, will you link attendees to video and publish or do we need to search? Um, we can send you guys the link as well. Um, I have all your details if you've registered. So um, yeah, we'll forward that uh, the recording to you guys. We're in my evening, so I'm now going to make this look really nice. <laughs> Tom, the perfectionist. Thanks everyone for your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.